Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part four of the SCUM 0.8 handbook, where I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about SCUM, right from the start up till the end. And today we are going to do basic training on how to defend yourself versus PVE elements. And today we're going to focus on puppets, because I forgot that I told everyone to use my server INI file, and I've gotten about five messages telling me that you guys would like to know how to fight multiple puppets um, because you're dying okay so a lot of people are still stuck on part one because the puppets hit a bit harder there are a lot more puppets than on official servers so yes we're going to cover that today but for now i'm just going to bury this chest because i thought to myself I don't want to level up my archery skill with a compound bow. Yes, the compound bow and broadhead arrows is very powerful, very good for PvP, but I will be much more potent with a bow when I've got advanced archery. And the easiest way to level up um, archery is to do it with a normal bow. So all I decided to do is craft four ropes and cut down a tree with my chainsaw for the planks. As you guys see, I've already added the planks. Now I've crafted four tree block rope, which I'm just going to fill the chest with. And all I'm going to basically be doing now is I'm going to be putting all the items um, into my chest. Okay? All the items I'm going to be putting into my chest right now. Keep the food. I'll sell that. gonna sell the swords swords are gonna go for good money might keep one of them I'll keep that one shotgun <clears> hmm <throat> okay I'm gonna drop the shotgun on the ground we want to repair the hunting rifle I'm gonna keep that I'll take as much clothing with me as I can because that's easy money. Okay. Really easy money to sell the clothing. Um, keep this on me for the next cargo drop. Not going to worry about that right now. Keep the scissors on me. That's good for getting rags from items. Okay, so now our car's empty. Okay, now I'm just going to take the shovel in my hand, hold F, and I'm going to bury it right here where it, where it is. We are still at our hiding spot outside the trader, but this will just be this will just make it much easier. You usually want to bury a chest underneath the bush, guys. Like you know, there's going to be a bump where I buried it. So it's better to bury it inside a bush or chop a tree down, put it underneath a tree. But I mean, it's not going to be easy for a person to find this. And now I'm just going to put uh, my shovel. Now I'm going to put the shovel in the car, I don't mind. And the easiest way for me, guys, to get what I want is like this. If I'm on a multiplayer server and there's someone inside there, I'm just going to drive out of there. But if I don't see any players on a multiplayer server, this is what I'm going to do. Because I already told you guys I want to drive the Leica. Okay. And we can always find this vehicle again. But for a person that focuses on survival, which doesn't mind running around, which doesn't mind to go get another vehicle okay for an experienced player it's very very easy to make money so i'm just going to stop the car get out and then do what uh, and then do this if you want me to buy that 
You better give me good price. There we go, guys. We're rich. Very, very quickly. Okay? Yeah. And now, we can buy whatever we want. First thing I want... Welcome, stranger. ...is a K6 helmet. And I've got enough fame, guys, for it. So I'm going to buy a K6 helmet. Put that on my head. Um... Don't really have space for it now, but what can we do here? We can put that there, put that there, and put that there. Uh, okay. Need lighter items, so let's do it like that. And then we can put that. How are we going to sort this out quickly? We are going to sort it out like that. Okay. And then I Guns want a tactical unloaded. vest. Security reasons, obviously. Then we've got the tactical vest. And then we want a uh, camo hiking backpack. I'm gonna buy the camo hiking backpack. Um, just double click on everything because the camo hiking backpack has got a lot of inventory space. Just can't double click on the clothing. That's not gonna work very well. Uh, I'm gonna sell these two so long. That thing registered. Okay. <laughs> Kidding. No. Then cares. I Guns want some military clothing. Security reasons. Obviously. I'm gonna buy that shirt. Um, gotta give me two inventory slots, which is better. I'm gonna sell that. That thing registered. <laughs> Kidding. Nobody cares. Why do you say zero? Okay, I don't really care Guns about that. Come unloaded. Let's Security go for the reasons. clothing again. Obviously. Want that one. Much more inventory space, so it's just better on every level possible. Then I Guns want some military pants. Security reasons. Obviously. We're gonna take that one. Again, military pants has more slots. Military clothing is just better overall, guys. And <clears throat> gonna get rid of the raincoat because the tactical vest just gives me more. Um, yeah. And then Guns I want uh, SF 90. Obviously. With about th two, three magazines, three rounds of ammo. There we go. Crafted holster. Don't really like crafted holster, so I'm going to go holster. I'm going to buy this one. I'm going to put that crafted holster on. Put that in there. And then I want to buy a sight. I want to buy a sentry sight. Oh, the sentry side takes more. Okay. Red dots. Sentry skirt. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Takes more fame. We are in the desert area. We can just go pick olives to get more fame. We're not worried about that. Um, while we're at while we're here. Get some night vision. There we go. We've got night vision. And I forgot to put that in the vehicle. I wanted to put those arrows in the vehicle. That's bad. I wanted to put those arrows in the vehicle. But it's fine. We can, almost, we can always buy that. Um, yeah, guys. I'll just, I'll just buy it again. Okay, it's fine. Doesn't matter. Sell these two. Sell, sell that, sell. Um, sell that. And then I want come unloaded. a hunter. Reasons. Okay, Obviously. so I'm going to need 240 fame, okay? That is our next objective, is to get to 240 fame. Which we will be able to do quite easily. What shoes do we have on? 
Can I one military? I want up? military boots. If you're trying to rob the place, I guarantee so you, go I'm boots. well armed. Yeah, I want those boots. There we go. Let's put those boots on. And that's it. Now all I want to do is unpack that and unpack that. Put that in there. Okay, so we've got three full magazines for the SF-19. I want to add that to the quick slot. I want to press three. I want to load the SF-19. That's the best pistol in the game. Okay. Most versatile pistol in the game. And then I definitely want to Guns get a unloaded. M9 suppressor. Obviously. Okay, so I want the suppressor. There we go. That's going to help a lot. We can still aim very, very nicely. And we will get the we will get the fame when we want it. We've still got the bow. And I want to replace the bow. So I'm just going to sell the bow for now. What's up? So to sell Guns the bow, I'm just going to my holster. We're going to sell that. that thing registered. We'll buy it later. I'm kidding. Nobody cares. Okay, so we sold the vehicle there. We bought the military gear there. Then we went to the general. Then we go into the general goods store. Welcome, welcome. We're just gonna sell Feel all, free to all browse of around. this. Don't really know why I can't sell that. Let's see what you have. Here's what I've got. Weird that I can't sell that jean. But in any case, gonna sell all the clothing, which is also worth something. That I can't sell the mask either. Okay, that's a bit weird. Okay, um, I think we've sold everything we wanted to sell. Now we're going to go to the bar quickly, the saloon. We want to buy food at the saloon. New clientele, step right up. Can't sell these here either. Okay, ma'am, if I can't sell them, you can just keep them with you. Okay, there you go. There's a bit of clothing for you. So what I want from you, ma'am, is bread. I want two bread. Thank you. And then I What's want poison? kiwi. These are for various reasons, guys. That's going to give me vitamin C. And then I want milk. Milk. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so you don't sell milk. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. My doors are always open. So let's see if the general store has got milk. It should have welcome, milk. Welcome, welcome. Feel free to browse around. There we go. I want two more. Okay. So. Make sure to stop by again. When we eat bread. Bread is going to give us a ton of carbs, um, quite a lot of protein, and very little fat. Okay, that is like the perfect combination for food. And I'm, just, I'm going to stop it when it hits about 50%, before it hits 50%. Okay, so that, 37 grams of protein, 160 grams of carbs, and 12 grams of fat is a perfect, perfect combination. And if we go here... We can just see the breads giving us the K vitamin, um, B9, B6, B4, B5, B3, B2, B1, CA, MG, K, okay, SE. Okay, guys, bread's going to give us a lot, okay? Then when we eat the kiwi, look at the vitamin C now. Look at the vitamin C, okay? Vitamin C is getting boosted, like super, super, super boosted, okay? Very good for vitamin C. And then for the vitamin um, D, you can just drink once. And there we go. We're getting vitamin D, okay? Only thing that we're missing here is um, vitamin E. So we can add cornflakes to it. <clears throat> 
Should we Here's can what go I've got. corn? Corn flakes. <clears throat> and then we can eat corn flakes. And there. We've got a bit of vitamin E as well. Okay. Very, very happy chappy. Very healthy dude we've got here. Okay. That's the basic diet. And now I am going to make a 20 pound bow again. And then go to this town. That's a dangerous place. And I'm going to give you guys some, some training. Okay. Um, I'm sorry that I left a lot of people in the dark or in the dust. Uh, but yeah, the messages came through quite late. So let me craft the 20 pound bow and 12 arrows again. And I'll be with you guys now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we start with combat training, um, I've crafted normal arrows. <clears throat> I've got the starter axe, which we all started with, and the 20-pound bow. <clears throat> and we are at the safe zone. And because we are in the desert area, we are going to get olives. Olives is going to help us to get that fame that we need very, very quickly. And so, just going to kill this puppet. He's, he's a good distance from me. I don't need to... Do anything fancy. Just put the dart on his chest and kill him. When it comes to shooting with the bow, it's very important to start from at the basics, which means don't try and shoot them from too far away. Don't get scared to get close to them. You will get used to what range they can detect you at. Okay, and these bushes here can give you olives. And every olive gives you fame. We were at 188 fame. Now we're at 213. We just need 240, okay? So we're just going to go to the bushes that look like that one. It's like an off green color, okay? And when we're using the axe, we just want to go in for the hit and back away, okay? And then we want to go in for the hit and back away, in for the hit and back away. You want to take time between hits so that you don't run out of stamina. If you run out of stamina, that's not going to be good, okay? And we can just go like this, sideways, okay? But we have to be uphill. You can, okay, the, the auto-locking is on. That's why I don't like the auto targeting, guys. So we can literally just get, stay out of their range. Wait for them to eat. Okay. Wait for the animation. And then stay out of the range. And then, you know, then hit them. It is a bit complicated on uneven ground because they're going to slide down the hill when they go for you. And, you know, so on unlevel ground, it's a little bit more complicated. And because I've got armor on, they don't really do anything to me. But yes, that's your first problem. This auto-targeting, when you press H, it will change your targeting. So you can't change it when you're not in combat mode. Just press V to go into combat mode. And press H until it says melee option mode change to manual. And the, the semi-automatic and the automatic is for me like cheating. Most people use it or content creators. I like to go on manual so that I've got complete control over my character because as you guys saw, I was locked onto the puppet, which makes things very, very difficult for me, okay? So again, just go to these off green bushes. Okay, right around the safe zone here. You guys can see that's like an off green bush. And just gonna search a few of these bushes. I think we need five, five more olives, which isn't a lot. So, yeah, any desert area has got these olive bushes. And we can just search the olive bushes. We get olives. And then, in the meantime, I'm running towards the town so that we can do some serious training. I think this is an olive tree. No, it's not. Sorry. My bad. Okay, 
If it doesn't say search, guys, it's not olive bush. This is off green. This is off green. A lot of bushes here. So double click it into my inventory and just drop it out again. So we need three more olives to get to 240 fame. You need 400 fame for to buy a vehicle. And as you guys can see, the desert area has got a lot of these olive bushes. And that's the meta at the moment. Not killing puppets. Okay. Searching olive bushes. That's the new meta. And they haven't changed it. So the devs think this is a fun way to level, you know, to get, get fame. Hopefully they're going to give us more options. But yeah, like I say, I just have to go east now. What, can I search this? Yeah, I can search this. I think these are olive trees. Like I say, one puppet is very easy, guys. Okay? So because I'm not gonna lock on to him, I can just do I can just do whatever I want. Okay? And as long as I'm jogging, I should be fine. Okay, there there she gets me. And so you wanna be moving sideways a lot, like this, so that she can't do a Hulk smash on you, okay? But if I'm in first person, you know, I can stay out of a range, hit her. Then she comes at me, out of a range, hit her, okay? And I like to go backwards and sideways. Not just backwards. Sometimes I just like to go sideways, like this. Okay, I'm in a bush so she can't see me. Like this, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, backwards and sideways helps a lot. And now, it's just about the timing. There's animation that plays when you hit. Okay, if your animation is faster than hers, you're going to hit her first. Okay, and <clears throat> that's the most important thing. Just getting used, used to whatever you're supposed to do. Um, this got infection, so let's just treat that one quickly. But yeah, like, now that I'm explaining it to you guys, you know, I'm complicating it more than it needs to be complicated. But moving backwards is very, very important, and moving sideways is very important as well. Okay, I'm just going to... No, 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 no. I'm going to treat that one. Okay, she literally beat the poop out of me with armor on. But of course, she hit me where I had no armor on my arms and on my leg and stuff like that. Okay, so yes, I know the puppets hit hard, but you're going to have to... Let me just get into a bush here. Bush is always your best friend. Okay, mm. and of course, you guys can see now, after we've gotten hit, our healing speed is 1.115. But if we lay down, if we lay down like this with X... It only goes up to 1.2. But if we go tab, lay down or sit down, then our healing speed goes to 2. Okay, so double the healing speed. So let me heal quickly, go into the town, and then, you know, just take it a bit more serious. Although the weight is having a major effect on me. I just want to see something. Oh, no, just because I got hit. But in any case, guys, the weight that I have on me does decrease my performance score. So if I, wa if I had no weight on me, I would have been able to move like my jog speed. I used my jog speed there to get out of their range. But I, if, if I had less weight on me, then my jog speed would have been a little bit faster to get out of their range. But in any case, we're going to go into the town now with an axe and a bow. And I'm just going to go, we're just going to cover basic Basic training versus puppets. Hey guys, here's another car. I don't want you guys to abuse the cars right now. Okay? Don't want you to do... I show you what you can do with one vehicle. Okay? So, you can utilize that. Um, so, yeah. We could probably drive this vehicle to the trader as well. But like, I, like I'm telling you, it's not going to be difficult... 
It's not going to be difficult. And with the bow, guys, like, I can, if you're aiming at him like this directly, okay, when you put the dart on him, just put the dart on him, release the bow, okay? If you can put the dart on them and release the bow without missing them, if your arrows aren't dropping short, like, put the dart on them, release the bow. You know, do, put the dart on them, release the bow. The arrow's getting there, so that's that's not a bad distance, okay? We can aim a little bit higher, okay? So, you just have to get used to the distance at which you can use a bow effectively. And at what, uh, roughly at the distance that they are going to detect you, that's the distance at which you can kill them, okay? As soon as they can see you, you can kill them without having like, you know, without adjusting your height or anything like that. I've got the baseball bat with me, but we're going to do this properly, okay? And as you guys can see, you know, the weight, the weight um, is affecting my performance score, but I don't care about that. I've took off the gloves and the tactical jacket and anything that, you know, my underpants and my socks, just, just so that I don't get hot. In the desert area, your character does get hot. So let's, let's just go into a dangerous area. I'm going to show you guys now. I'm going to take on two puppets, okay, without the locking mode. And what I want to do is I just want to hit and get away. Hit, get away. And I don't want to, I don't want to stay against her. I, you know, I don't want to do this. Look at my stamina, guys. Look at my stamina down here. The stamina is at zero. When the stamina is at zero, you're doing no, no, no damage. Okay? Absolutely no damage. So just, just lie down and get our stamina back. Every, like, every 10% of stamina you lose, you are losing damage. Like, you never actually want to hit the puppet with lower than 50% stamina. Imagine to yourself you're in a boxing match, okay? Let's use a good example. In a boxing match, when the fighters enter the ring in round one, they are hitting fast, they are throwing haymakers, they are hitting the poop out of one another. But here at round eight or nine, they are hanging on onto each other. It's difficult for them to knock each other out, okay? So just think of it like that. Every time you hit, you're getting tired. And if you keep hitting, you're going to be exhausted. And when you're exhausted, you run out of power. I did martial arts, okay, um, like judo. And, um, you know, other martial arts as well. But I remember in judo, like, I, I, I knew what I wanted to do at the beginning of the fight. But at the end of the fight, I was just desperate to to strangle the person or to get get him into an arm bar because as soon as we went to the ground you know and we fought on the ground for a very very long time we got tired okay and then both of us are out of energy and power so at the end of the day the, the person that wins a long fight whether it's a boxing match or a karate match or a judo match or a taekwondo whatever competitive environment there is the person who wins is the person who's willing to, who wants it more, who's willing to push himself past the limit of tiredness. And I just want you guys to use that reference when, you, when you're hitting a puppet, okay? So when I hit, I lose 10% um, stamina, okay? Look at my stamina. There, I'm at 90% stamina. If I hit quickly, look at that stamina. Look how fast that stamina is going down. But more importantly, look how slow I'm hitting now. Look how slow I am hitting now, guys. You don't want to do this against a player and you don't want to do this against a puppet because the puppet will get a shot in as you're getting tired. Look how fast I'm hitting now. Look when I slow down. Right there at about 30%, okay? My speed, it, not, not only my damage, but my speed is going down. So when I'm hitting a puppet, I am thinking, I'm immersing myself in the experience, and I'm thinking I need to breathe after each, each, each shot, okay? So I'm hitting him, and I get a, take a gap, hit him again, and I take a gap, hit him again, and I'm taking a gap, 
Hitting him again. Hitting him again. So I've killed him and I kept my stamina around 80%. Okay? So that each shot is as effective as possible. And when I hit him, I'm just, you know, I'm all like after a hit, I'm always pressing S and I can use the D, A and D keys as well. Okay? Or I can hit him, you know, and go sideways. Hit him, stroll. Like, you can fight like this. You can fight like when you're walking. That's going to be very difficult to get out of their hitting range. Then you can jog while you're hitting, and then you can run. Okay? So you can hit and move back much, much faster. Mouse scroll wheel down. You can fight while walking. You can fight while jogging. Okay? Hit and just control the distance like this, or you can... You know, you can run. You guys can really see the difference when I'm when I'm walking backwards, jogging, running. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And depending on what weapon you're using, like the axe, distance is very very important. Because if I'm using the bat, just add it to the quick axis. If I if I'm using the bat, I've got a lot more reach. Like if I'm using a spear, a spear can literally stab through two or three puppets if they're close enough to one another. I cannot hurt two puppets with with a short weapon, a short one-handed weapon like the like the axe that I've got on me now. I can hurt two puppets with a spear if they're standing behind one another. I can like hit through both of them. And with a bat, I can hit multiple puppets as well because I've got a swinging arc with a bat, okay? So, again, let's just focus on, on, on the axe, okay? When I fight, I like to be in a jogging motion, okay? Or I think most of the time when I fight, like, I don't think I ever fight like this. I think I usually fight in a running, and I'm not... Because I'm because I'm not like running in one direction all the time, I've just got a lot more control over my character. So I go in for the hit. Okay, I don't stand still because that timing needs to be perfect. Because if I stand still, you guys see he wants to hit me. But if I go in, he doesn't have time to do his animation. I am hitting him before he starts his animation. And he can only start his animation once he's close to me. Okay, so only when I miss him can he complete his animation. So when I stood still and waited for him to get close to me, he's going to start his animation and then I need to be quicker than him. But if I'm going into him, then I can hit him before he starts his animation for hitting me. Okay? And again, distance plays a role because we clearly missed him there. Okay? And then when it comes to a town, guys, like people, you know, a lot of people died in a town. When it comes to a town, just know that there's a heck of a lot of windows. Okay? Like, I'm going to go into the police sta station now. Okay? Hopefully this police station has got a lot of puppets. Like, there's a lot of puppets. Okay? There's a lot of puppets. So I can go in here now. Okay? And attract all, you know, attract a few puppets if I want to. Just have to make sure that I've got an exit strategy. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> oh my word. What the... Where's my money? Where's my money, dude? Where'd my money go? Did I spend all the money? I've got zero bucks. What did I do with my money? Eh? What did I do with my money? Well, that's sad. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. I just laughed very, very hard at myself. And as you guys can see, even after 5,000 hours, everyone's human, okay? That's the big thing. I don't, want you, I don't want you to get frustrated by this game. There's a lot of... The traders makes come very, very easy, but also very enjoyable. And you can see now that my... If you look up here, my balance is at minus $750. So I... It cost me 250 to random respawn. I didn't respawn where I wanted to, so I just didn't open my parachute, died. Random respawned, wasn't close 
because I knew I was here close to the trader. So the first time I spawned, I was uh, spawned here. So I just hit the floor, respawned randomly, then I respawned here. Didn't open my parachute, died again, and then I respawned around here. And then I was like, in okay, you know, as, as long as I'm within two sectors of where I died, you know, I could run there. Okay. So what I wanted to say, guys, is don't focus on, don't focus on the puppets. Just focus on yourself, okay? So like this, like this puppet over here, okay? A window, a window is very good, okay? Because as soon as he loses sight of you, okay? As soon as he loses sight of you, he doesn't know where you are. So you can be like a jumping jack through windows. Okay, and I've I've basically taught myself something here. Because I I like to run into a bunker, attract all the puppets, and then try and lead them out. Where I can just run into the bunker and open a door and close a door. Because there's only always ways um, to kill the puppets. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down here. Close the door behind me. There's a pistol there. Okay, luckily there aren't puppets here now. Like you guys can see, my body isn't here because I just respawned such a lot of times. And there we've got all our loot back. Okay, not too bad. But of course, like I say, funny enough, we sold our... We sold our... Um, our money, which was very, very, very funny. Okay, so like the police station, okay? What you want to do is you want to clear the police station, which isn't very difficult, okay? The bottom is the bottom is clear, okay? There's no puppets here. And all you want to do now, now you can go and attract puppets, okay? Now you can attract puppets if you want to. Jump over something. They're going to struggle to follow you. Okay, they're going to struggle to follow you. Now you can try and attract as many puppets as you want. Okay, where's that other puppet? Where's that other puppet? Here's the other puppet. As you see, as we're running, you know, it, they can't really hit us while we're running. Now you just want to make sure you don't run out of stamina. I can jump over here for them to hurt themselves, but I'm not going to jump over it. I'm going to track this guy as well. Okay. So you can attract all the puppets. Just make sure you don't run out of stamina. That's very, very important. Okay, then you can jump through a window. And now... You can... You don't have to worry about skill points now. Okay, so that's a very, very easy way to kill a bunch of puppets. Of course, I could have, guys, I could have jumped over the fence. Like, I could have, I could have let them follow me up until here, then jump over the fence, because I know they're going to fall or hurt themselves when they jump over the fence, then jump into the window so that they don't get a shot off on me. Okay, but you have to make sure that the window that you use can be used. Okay, that's like this was this would be a fast window to get through. Okay, this window is fast to get through. So that's one method to clear a town. Um, you know, it's, it's not my favorite way to clear a town, but this is a way to get to kill a lot of puppets. Um, you can get onto a roof, you know, if you don't want to let them hurt you, try and get onto a roof. Because wherever you see them, there will be a house. If you're looting a town, there will be a house near to where most of the puppets are. Okay? And then you can just kill them slowly but surely. If you've got a gun and you shoot the gun off, then all of them are going to come to you. So you can hit, you can shoot one gun round and then take out your bow. Okay? And, and kill them like that. But, again, let's get to the basics here. Okay. When you enter a room, again, everything is about stamina. Let's just see. Maybe there's a puppet up here. Like I told you guys, everything is about stamina. So she's thin. 
I can kill her with the bow, but I'm just gonna hit her once, move back, hit her again, move back, and then she doesn't even have to start moving. I just have to, like, if I hit now, I'm probably gonna hit at that TV. You see? But I'm pressing the button now and then moving forward. Press move forward. Okay? I can still hit the I can still hit hit the puppet here. Press move forward. Okay? Although the puppet is there, if I press move forward, I can hit the puppet here. So I can and then if the when the puppet starts moving, depending on how fast my 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 melee skill is, of course if you don't if you don't start with melee weapons. Okay, if you don't start with melee weapons, you're going to be slower. So then the timing changes. Then you're going to be like, okay, um, as soon as she starts moving, I have to press. Like, if she's there and she starts moving towards me, I must press immediately. Okay? Or instead of moving into her, yeah, I must move a bit back. So, get, understanding how long you take to hit, depending on your melee weapon skill. Okay? And knowing that moving forward helps you a lot. Moving backwards helps you a lot. Going sideways helps you a lot, okay? That, that is something that you guys have to get used to. Okay, but uh, disabling that locking mode is very, very important. Going through windows is very, very important, okay? So now I see there's puppets here. So... I mean, I can climb on top of the car. I can run into that house. Okay, so I know there's puppets there. I can literally jump on the wall, guys. I can literally jump onto the wall. Okay? There's a lot of options for you to be safe. A lot of people use these, these options to make sure that they, that they can never get hit by a puppet. Okay, they keep jumping through windows. Even if they detect a puppet here, if a puppet stands up, they'll jump through the window and then kill the puppet so that the puppet can never get to them. You know, jumping into water. I can't jump into water because I'm very heavy now. But, like, if a puppet isn't looking at you, then you, like, that distance, guys. I don't know what your FOV is at, but at this distance, I can just put the dot on him and release the mouse button. Okay. If he's like in, let's see, let's say he's that tan a telephone pole. My arrow's not going to get there. So then I have to aim up. But I don't want to really shoot where I have to aim up. I don't really want to shoot that way. I always want to be close enough to them. Okay. So that I don't have to adjust with my height. Very weird that there's no puppets here. But yeah, sorry for not thinking about this. As you guys can see, there's still a lot of mistakes that I make. Okay, but finding a puppet in a gas station is a really, really good example. And finding that is freaking fantastic. That is absolutely wonderful. Oh, I kill so this puppet, I can just go like this. Okay. I can. And then I can just say, I'm here. You know? Or I can jump through again. Hey, buddy, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. If he doesn't come to me, then I can shoot him through the other window. And now I can do target practice on him. Okay, guys, so what I'm trying to tell you is... There's many ways to stop the puppets from getting to you. As you guys saw, I ran two sectors without any gear on me. Okay. That's nice ammo. I definitely want that ammo. I ran two sectors without any gear on me. And look at my fame. As I ran over two sectors, I picked up all the olives. Okay. I looted every, every olive bush. So although I died and someone could probably get upset in a situation like that, but I don't. Because I know I can get 750 bucks easily, but I don't want you guys to sell vehicles. You're not going to able... Do not do things that are overpowered. Yes, the ve it's easy to s sell a vehicle. Yes, it's not exploiting anything. But 
that's not going to make you tough. That's not going to help you to form good habits. Because then when you get to a server where there's no vehicles and you've always just sold vehicles, got the best loot easily, laughed because you're the best in the world, you know, and bragged about it. Then when you get to a hardcore server or you get to a server with no vehicles, then you don't know what to do. Okay? Rather leave those easy steps as an add-on. Don't make those easy steps your identity. Because that's where you're going to get angry. That's where you're going to show people that you can't handle, it, handle dying. Or you can't handle it when you can't find a vehicle. Or you can't handle it when you have to run around. Okay? It's a survival game. Yes, there are many easy ways. Okay? To get money. That's why I showed you the vehicle. You know, so that one day when you're like in... Ah, I can't find any loot. You, know, you can sell the vehicle. But like I say, guys, with the bow, you know, again, again, hopefully, yeah, there's one here, okay, so hello, woman, hello, woman, let her, you know, come to me, ma'am, come to me, okay, now I can close the door, and again, now what I, what I want to say is at that distance, at this distance, guys, if I put the dot on her, and I release the key, I cannot miss, okay, At this distance, if I hold the dot, release, I cannot miss. But it, you have to gauge that distance with every bow. The, because you have the 20 pound, you have the 35 pound, you've got the 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 ballista. And then when you set the compound bow, you can put it, put it to 110, 120 pounds. Okay, yes, the stronger the bow is, the, the less you have to worry about the distance. You know, because then you can kill puppets by just putting your... The stronger your bow is, the, the, the less you have to worry about distance. Because with a ballista bow, a puppet can be against that wall. And if I put my dart against him, okay, if I put my dart on the puppet and I release the, I release the left click, I'm going to shoot. I'm going to hit them. Okay? And if I've got the carbon broaded arrows, okay, then I'm going to be able to kill every puppet with one, ar with one arrow. So just understand that it's going to get easier. And if there's any of you that's getting frustrated, I don't want you to get frustrated, guys. Really, I don't want you to get frustrated. That is not the purpose of the handbook. If you get frustrated, like you're still at part one and you're struggling, delete that server INI file. Just delete the server INI file. Go back into the game. Verify game files, okay? Just let it create a new server and INI file for you and then play on default settings, okay? If my server and INI file is frustrating you, trust me, the normal single player settings are going to be much, much easier. The reason I wanted you to use um, these settings is to just prepare you for all the servers, because if you're used to these settings, then you're ready for any server, basically. Okay, the only other server that's really going to push you is probably the meat grinder. But when you used to this much puppet damage and these many puppets, remember, there's no players to focus on. So you, I'm just helping you to hone your skills to the maximum so that when you get to other servers, the PvE is not something that you focus on. You're a master at PV, PvE. After this handbook, you will be a master at dealing with puppets. You will be a master at dealing with megs. And then you can just focus on the players. Instead of trying to to, to um, learn what you know, to learn the PvE side of it, learn how to defend yourself against puppets, learn how to defend yourself against... You, know, the, the, you, you now have to uh, learn PvE and PvP. Player versus environment and player versus player. But when you're done with this handbook, all you're going to think about, all you have to try and figure out is player versus player. That's it, guys. Okay? That's it. So please just, you know, again, focus on your range. And you can train this with, like, building a target at your base. Or you can just practice it with, with targets. Here's a tree, there's a tree, or there's a pole. Release, release, release. 
You can see the arrow drop there. Look at the arrow drop there. Okay. If I want to hit, if I want to hit that tree, can I do this? No way. It's not even hitting the tree. So if I want to hit at that distance, I have to aim up. Okay. Okay. That's a little bit too high. That's fine. Okay. So you can just, just practice on trees. Okay. Later when we build a base, I'll let you guys build targets. And you can focus on that. Okay. So that arrow was short. This arrow hit. And this arrow hit as well. Okay. So now you can see at that distance, where did the arrow go? And you'll learn the distances over time. And again, yes, the axe is a great starting tool. But you, guys, you want to get to the metal sword as soon as possible. And you want to get to the medieval sword as soon as possible. And you want to get to a bat with nails on as soon as possible. Okay? Or Fuster's Machete. Or you play with a Danny Trejo character. You want to get... Oh, you're going to get past this axe as soon as possible. Because yes, it's a good starting weapon. But it's not a great weapon for the long run. It's not a great... Like, like I'll never run around with an axe like, with the gear that I've got on me now. You know, yes, I can protect myself against puppets and stuff like that. But this is just basics. Okay, I can even do this. Okay, I can even do this. Okay, this is how far I am for him. Press and forward. A little bit too far, yeah. Press forward. Press forward. He doesn't even have time for his animation. He doesn't have time. But if I stand here... Okay, let him come out. Yeah, come here, come here. See? I'm just mouse crawling. I'm mouse crawling every time he wants to hit me. So I'll stand still until he wants to do his animation. Once he wants to do his animation, I'm gonna run away. Okay, stand still, run. Stand still, run. Stand still, run. Because I, as soon as he gets close to me, I want to run. As soon as he gets close to me, I want to run. Because I know where he's going to want to try and hit me. But I want him to stand still. Because if he doesn't stand still, he's going to do a Hulk smash on me. Okay? Okay? So if you want to train this, hit him with the fist. But that animation, that animation is very important. Where does he want to hit me? I'm not going to wait for him to hit me. As soon as he stops, I know his next thing is going to be to hit me. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop that from happening. So again, I, it's better to be the aggressor. I don't care. If he gets close to me, I hit him. If he gets close to me, I hit him. I don't move away. He wants to get within my range, I hit him. So there's aggressive as soon as he enters a certain range, not, not when he's against me. As soon as I see him entering a certain range, I'm going to attack him. By either standing still, but again, I want to close the distance. If he's standing there and he starts moving towards me, I'm going to close the distance and be the aggressor. Or if there's multiple puppets, I'm going to try and, you know, I'm going to try and stand still and then, you know, get them, move away, get them. If I'm in a town and there's a lot of puppets, stuff that, I'm, I'm getting through the window, Okay. So let's just try this once once more, guys. And yeah, I don't know how long this video is, but just understand that they, they, you've got an animation speed to hit them. 
they have got an animation speed to hit you. When they get into a certain range, they are going to do that animation. And sometimes they will move forward when they take all, both arms up in the air and try and Hulk smash you, okay? Where they're literally going to glide over the floor. So having distance on them won't really help. If you do this, they can still hit you. If you do, if you do this, they can't. You know, I, he comes to me, I do that. He can't. He can't. He can't. Okay, he can't. Okay, you can play touch-ins with them. And if you can do it, what, what, if you do it while jogging, guys, do it. I just, I always do it when running because I'm not, I'm not using a lot of, I'm not using a lot of uh, stamina when I do this. Okay. But yes, I hope that helps you guys. Sorry for leaving you guys in the dust. Okay. Again, I, he sees me, I go through a window. And then I can just, I can just kill him like that. Okay. Use the windows. Use the walls. Use many things to your advantage. Okay. I'm just trying to see where's the church now again. Where is the church? I think the church has a few puppets. And like when they were following, following me here, I could jump off this. They will hurt themselves badly. I can just jump over things. I can jump onto this thing. I can jump onto this thing. Okay, I can parkour to lose them. I can do a heck of a lot of things to lose them, guys. Okay, there's just a puppet in the ground. If you have a puppet underneath the ground, you want to get rid of them, just come down the stairs. They can walk through stairs. They can't go through anything else, but they can walk through stairs. She's supposed to be able to be able to walk through stairs. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, let her just stay in there. There's a puppet, okay? I'm tired, but there will always be a window. There will always be a window, guys. There will always be a window. But I can kill them normally, or I can do it the safe way. Using windows, using walls, using parkour, making sure I've always got 100 stamina, jumping over things just like I jumped over the rocks, using bushes. How did I run all the way here without anything on me? When I saw the puppets in front of me, I ran around them. Because in the forest, okay, I didn't put the puppet settings at a place where you can't easily run around them. Okay, so you can easily run around puppets in the wild. And if one of them sees you, you know, then you can run over rocks or run through bushes. If they see you, you're clearly not on top of them because you're trying to run around them. But when you see one of them aggro on you, just run through a bush. You'll lose sight of you and you won't have any problems anymore. If you don't want to attract a bunch of puppets, move slowly. Okay? Like there's a puppet there. Get into, let's say that. Let's say that window is the puppet. So I see a puppet there. And then I just want to kill him first. And then move on. Okay, taking your time is very important as well, because if I walk, guys, it's almost going to be impossible. It's almost going to be impossible for my papa to hear me. Look at that speaker. Look at that speaker here. No, yeah, like I'm making very little noise now. When I run, look how much noise I'm making now. Okay, making the chances much more for a papa to be able to hear me. And again, okay. Again, I can open the door, I can attract him, I can close the door, and then I can hit him through the door, or I can shoot him through the door with a bow. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of safe ways to do this, guys. A lot of safe ways to do this. Okay? So I hope this helps you. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and click that like button. And yes, we will carry on with our adventure on part five. Um, and if you've got any other questions, anything you want to show, anything you want me to cover, I will stop the progression and cover that. 
So if you've got any other questions versus puppets, okay, ask me. And I will I will make sure that I cover it in the in in the next part. And of course, I will take you guys through an in-depth uh, meg guide as well. So yeah. Hope that helped you. And again, if you want to see and learn everything there is to see and learn about scum, hit that subscribe button, guys. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers. <laughs>